Hey guys, so you're thinking about making a move to Portland, Maine or thereabouts? Well, in this episode, we're gonna showcase Biddeford, Maine. Biddeford is about 15 miles south of Portland, Maine. Um, it's actually Maine's fastest grown city and youngest grown city, with the average age being about 36. And ironically, it's Maine's oldest city in terms of when it was founded. So we're gonna take a walk down Main Street. We're gonna show you some of the shops and then I'm gonna take you to a few houses and their price points to see if living in this part of Maine makes sense for you. So sit back and enjoy the ride. I'm gonna go on a walking tour right now and then we'll hop in my car and I'll show you some houses and we're gonna get after that right now. Hey guys, so if this is the first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living, eating, breathing, sleeping, having fun in Maine, well then I would encourage you to subscribe and hit that bell to get, be the first to get notified when I drop new content. You know, we get calls, texts, emails all the time on what it's like to live in Maine. Guys, my name is Scott and my team and I, we love living here. We love helping people move here. It doesn't matter if you're going to move here in three days, 30 days, three months, maybe three years. We're here to help. Um, we're here to help you make a smooth move to Maine. There's a lot of people coming here. Um, you know, it's not a secret anymore. A lot of people say that Florida and Texas are the fastest growing states. Um, and they're only measuring how many people came into the state. But they're not measuring how many people came into the state and left the state. If you look at those statistics, actually North Carolina is number one with about 62 people out of every 100 coming into the state versus leaving the state. Maine and Florida actually number two and they're tied with about 55 people coming to the state out of 100 compared to everybody else which is less. So Maine is pretty popular. There's a lot of things happening in this state uh, and there's a lot of things happening in southern Maine. It's a very desirable area but as I said we're walking on uh, one of Main Streets and one of the Main Streets I should say the Main Street in Biddeford and I don't know if you can see this right now but I'm gonna kind of walk down. This is one of the mills that was just redeveloped in the last uh, couple years, uh, they have a gym in here called Impact Fitness. Uh, they have, here's a bank, this is my bank, Bangor Savings. They have a beautiful restaurant inside called the Lincoln Mill. And all these, all these uh, windows, if you will, are all apartments. So uh, this is just one of the examples of what's happening here in Biddeford, Maine. Um, as I look around, I mean, this is not the Biddeford, Maine of my father's days. If you're, thinking, if you're talking about Biddeford, Maine and what Biddeford, Maine became, there's a river that runs right down the center, I wouldn't say of Biddeford, Maine, really between Saco and Biddeford, Maine. And in the 1850s, industrialists saw this river and saw how it makes an S-turn. And that S-turn creates a lot of uh, power, a lot of cubic feet per minute water power. And that's what they needed to power these mills. So, they started building these mills in 1850 through about the early 1900s. Um, and it actually became the largest industrial complex in the world. It was, it was built on about 38 acres. And at one point it employed almost 10,000 people. It was a powerhouse for industry. And this was the mecca of business uh, in the 18, late 1800s, early 1900s. Much like many of the mills across this country you know as as manpower started moving overseas as labor became cheaper overseas people started abandoning these mills for cheaper like i said for cheaper labor and cheaper materials and these mills became uh, vacant and and started to deteriorate um, and that was no different here i mean with a with a almost a 40 acre parcel of mills and then all becoming abandoned Biddeford fell on some you know, fell in some dark times really from the 1970s to probably about 2010 coupled with that you know I don't, I don't know why people make these decisions beyond my pay grade I guess but at the time in the 70s they decided to put a to put a waste uh, treatment a uh, trash incinerator right in the middle of the downtown because they thought it was a mill district who's gonna live there right so Imagine walking down Main Street in Biddeford at the time. It's nothing but mills. They're becoming vacant and abandoned and you have a smell of garbage in your neighborhood or garbage on the Main Street. Not a very good place to live and not many people wanted to move here. Um, in about 2004, 
one person started the revitalization. He saw what Biddeford had, the potential that Biddeford had. It's a coastal town. It has exits right off 95. It has growing green fields uh, to, the, to the west with farms and stuff. And it has Biddeford Pool and high-end housing to the Atlantic coast, which is uh, Biddeford's coastline to the east. And he saw the potential. So he bought, for pennies on the dollar, about a 1.1 million square feet of mill space and started developing it. Now everybody told him he was crazy. What are you doing? You're, you're buying a mill space in a trash town. Nobody wants to live there. It was a very depressed area. It was, uh, it was kind of uh, very much down on its luck. But he saw it through. He kept on pushing. And in about 2000, 14, 2015, people started taking notice as he had been doing this for a while and he started developing out this campus, the mill campus called the Pepper Mill Campus, just one of the mills here in Biddeford. And other people took notice, so other developers started to come in. And now, you know, here we are in 2023, all the mills, or just about all the mills, have been revitalized and it has created such a buzz in, uh, in Biddeford. Actually, there's an organization in Biddeford called the Heart of Biddeford. It's a Main Street organization. There's about 1,600 of them across the country. And in 2022, it won the Great American Main Street Award, which was for the best Main Street in all of the country. So with that accolade and all the developments going here, this has become a very desirable place for people to move and to live. Um, Biddeford is, you know, it's a mill town still in many ways, but What's really happened is you have a ton of shops that have, have come here. You have some breweries, four or five breweries. You have some restaurants. There are some uh, high-end chefs that have moved from other parts of the country that have set up shop in Biddeford. And it's really on the rise. Uh, like I said, it's the youngest grown city with about 36 people. And there's a lot of entrepreneurs. These mills are not just apartments. There's a lot of small businesses in them. Um, and the mill that that first developer developed that 1.1 million. There was about 140 businesses in there, small entrepreneurial businesses, right? less than probably 10 employees. Some made it, some didn't, but what you discovered was more and more people wanted to move to Biddeford, wanted to get away from Portland on all the hustle and bustle. Uh, not that, you know, if you're from Dallas, Texas, or some of New York City, there's not a lot of hustle and bustle when you consider Maine, but for us Mainers, Portland's got a lot of hustle and bustle. So they started moving south and Biddeford and Saco became one of those desirable areas to live. So here we are today, we're walking on uh, one of the kind of side streets to the main street in Biddeford next to the Lincoln Mill. I'm gonna take you up here to Main Street and we're gonna uh, go by some of the shops, some of the places that you can eat. And uh, I'm gonna just show you around and give you an idea of what Main Street looks like. And then we'll, we'll hop into my car and I'll show you some uh, housing in the price points. Now it's not cheap to live here. I mean, the average price in Biddeford residential home, I was gonna say is about 425,000. It's kind of a coastal community. Obviously the coast, the closer you get to the coast, um, the more the prices, the higher the prices are. Um, and when something comes on the market, if it's priced right, it goes pretty quick. There's been such an influx of people moving here. It's crazy. Uh, what's happening in this in this state, especially in southern Maine. But uh, let's let's take a look at a couple of shops and give you an idea of Main Street. All right, so I'm walking on the upper end of Main Street, and here we have some. Let's see if you can see this sign: Natural Cafe Solutions. It's all organic stuff. It's a marketing cafe. Uh, you have Riley's Bakery, which has been here forever. It's kind of a staple in the community. Riley's has stuck around through all the times. Uh, it's been here for, I don't know, maybe a hundred years, but it's been here a lot and they have amazing bakery products and their pork pie. Their pork pies at Thanksgiving. You gotta have one. You got, um, you got Trillium here. Let's see if you can see that sign. Trillium, which is uh, homemade self sold It's all about this, this homemade stuff, this natural stuff. Honestly, I don't know a lot about it, but um, I hear it's a pretty popular store. We have some of the local banks. We have a little park right here. We have some of the local banks, but if it's savings, you have people looking at me saying, what is going on? Why is everybody being recording right now? Hi, Delilah, Hi, Jonathan. 
I'm recording Main Street. I was showing on my tune. Nice day. That's Delilah, director of the Heart of Biddeford. I already talked to you about the Heart of Biddeford, but uh, you, got, you got Biddeford Savings, you got PNC Insurance, this is my insurance. And then down in this upper, down in this corner, see if I can jaywalk here. Uh, yeah, I'm jaywalking. Down across the street, you got Elements, which is uh, one of the most popular coffee shops in Biddeford, especially downtown Biddeford. Um, for a little further down, you have a place called Fish and Whistle. Really, really good uh, fish food, if you will. Like their fish sandwiches and their clam cakes and their clam chowder is amazing. Um, so this is kind of up in Main Street. It's kind of quiet right now. It's it's a, it's a Wednesday afternoon after the lunch rush, um, but you're seeing all this stuff that's starting to get developed and all these people starting to move here. And if I was to come down here about five o'clock, most people are working today. Uh, this this place would be this place would be happening. Here, right here, is MacArthur Library, which is one of the oldest libraries in the in the state. And you want to know about the history of Biddeford or even Southern Maine, for that fact. Go to MacArthur Library. They got some photos. They got all kinds of stuff that's really cool on uh, on uh, the city and in the area and how this whole state became a state and how it got developed and where it is today. And if you're into history, I would recommend uh, I'd recommend checking out MacArthur Library. There's another place I'm going to recommend you check out too, and I'm going to walk down there in a few minutes. But uh, I'm going to come back at you in a second. As we start walking down to uh, the lower end of Main Street, we're going to go by City Theater. Now, there are not many theaters in many cities left, right? So most have movie theaters and you, and you, you know, it's just kind of what it is today. Well, here in Biddeford, you have a city theater where they do plays. And it's not like going to the movies. There's like live plays and live musicals and stuff. It's one of the only city theaters left in the country from what I've been told. But I've been there, it's pretty cool. You know, it was again built in the 18, 1900s. I'm not sure exactly when, but really cool. Go see a, go see a play there. Um, a lot of things kind of happening right there. We're about ready to walk by the Heart of Biddeford's office. As I said, they won the Great American Main Street Award for being the best Main Street in in, May, uh, in in the country in 2022. And here we are at City Theater. I missed the sign. Uh, there's City Theater. Um, and you can come in here, watch a play, you know, rainy day, come by, check it out, see what's going on. If you got nothing else to do, but pretty, pretty cool place to visit. So as we're continuing down uh, Main Street, you're gonna see, um, I'll put my hand, camera in this hand. You're gonna see some shops that have come to town lately. Um, you have a, a uh, what's this shop? Oh, and this one's still being renovated. That's why I didn't know what it was. This one's still being renovated. It's one of those shops that's being renovated. I had somebody waved at me. You got a dog grooming shop right here. Spike, they do an awesome job. You got nice nails. Everybody's running away from me because they see me recording. They don't want to be on camera. You got nice nails, which is a place that does, uh, you know, nails and stuff like that. You have a coast to coast barber shop. Kind of your typical Main Street shops. You have OG's, which is the original George Italian sandwiches. If you don't know what an Italian sandwich is, and I reckon you don't if you're not from here, uh, that's for another conversation, but Italians are very popular up here in Maine. You have 3D Variety, uh, which has been here forever. It's another one of those staples in the community, 3D Variety. And then as you continue down Main Street, um, you just got a lot of different things that are happening. This area down here has all been redeveloped. You got uh, the Dunn Bar, which is an Irish bar, which we're getting close to up here. And then you got, you got Sublime Taco, which is where I was doing Cinco de Mayo. Really, really good food. Um, you got Common Root Studio, which is a place that's all about music. Um, again, the Dunn Bar, and as we're coming up to right here. How you doing? Doesn't want to be filmed. And uh, you got Sublime Taco, which is uh, really, really good Mexican food, really good place, really good place to eat. I would definitely recommend go to Sublime Taco, even if you're just visiting. Uh, There's a kind of natural fiber and sit and shop. Here's another, this used to be, 
an old post office. And this is being renovated um, into something. Don't know yet, it's kind of a secret. Not a lot of people will tell me, but um, being renovated, just another one of those kind of older mill buildings that is uh, being renovated into something new again. So kind of the adage in, in Biddeford is turning something old into new again, uh, like it was back when it was originally built. Here we are walking by one of the prestigious uh, shops called Sugar. They have a manufacturing shop inside a mill, which I'll take you to in a few minutes. But they make uh, clothing and it's amazing some of the clothing they make. Uh, Roxy and Julian have done a tremendous job with uh, Sugar. This is a cheese uh, shop, Nibblesford, and you want some really good cheese. That's kind of that's kind of the place to go, in my opinion. I've had charcuterie boards. You know, I didn't even know what a charcuterie board was. I've lived in this earth for almost 55, actually now 55 years, but I didn't know about it until almost I was 55. And my wife's like, you don't know what a charcuterie board is? I'm like, I guess I'm not that high class. Anyways, uh, charcuterie boards, cheese, you want cheese, that's the place to go. All right, on this side of the street over here, you get the Biddeford Vintage Market and they sell vintage stuff, everything from vintage to car guitars to drums to tools to all kinds of stuff. You got an art certificate program for the underprivileged, uh, for kind of the special needs people that need, you know, arts and stuff like that, you know, creative stuff. You have a park right here called Chevno Park right in the middle. It's a small little park, but we have music in the park. When I say we, the Heart of Biddeford does music in the park here in the summer times. I think that's going to be starting in a few weeks. So. I believe it's every Tuesday night you can come down and listen to some cool bands for free and have some beverages. Obviously not alcoholic because it's a city park, but you know, have some, uh, I think they're doing a, a food truck or some type of foodie thing there this year. So pretty cool place to visit. You have across the street here, you have Cowbell Burger. Again, another shop that came to town probably in the last six or seven years. Um, you got Cowbell, and they make really good, really good uh, hamburgers. Just ask my wife. My wife would take a hamburger. I don't think she'd take it over a lobster roll, but she'd take a hamburger uh, over just about anything else. Just, you know, she's from Texas, though, so, I mean, I got to excuse her. Um, here, we're walking upon um, what we call Palace Diner. So you look up Palace Diner if you, uh, if you don't know anything about it. This is world renowned. It's like only got 19 seats. It's like a little trailway car. Um, it's only got these 19 booth seats. And the food here is amazing. I mean, it is amazing. Guys, I haven't missed many meals in my life. The food here is amazing. You gotta, you gotta try it. If you move to Biddeford or if you move anywhere close to here, you gotta come down to Palace Diner, have their breakfast. Um, they open up at eight in the morning, so you don't want to wait too later than that or you'll, you'll be waiting for a while because the seats go up pretty fast, but Palace Diner, definitely a place to be. All right, I've talked about in one of my other videos, there's not a, not a lot of nightlife in uh, Maine, but here is one example of nightlife. You got Martinis on Main Street, and here, I don't know if it's necessarily Martinis, but you got Martinis on Main Street, Main Street and you got $5 fins. That's right, $5, so you want a drink? Come here, five dollars. Everything's five dollars. You got a Philly's cheap rich, Richie ribeyes, um, cheese steaks, really good cheese steaks. If you're into that, again, the martini bar, another kind of quaint. I'm not really into martinis. I'm kind of a beer guy these days. Uh, actually, I don't drink alcohol that much anymore, to be honest with you. But kind of, kind of um, martinis is really cool. I used to love martinis. Um, and as we're getting down closer to the mill, remember that mill I told you that was developed of the first mill that they, uh, that the that developer started in developing called the Pepper Mill Campus. Well, we're coming down to it. I'm gonna take you inside. I'm gonna walk you around a little bit. I'm just gonna walk you around in one of the buildings. I mean, there's there was 16 buildings at one time. I think there's only like 10, 12 now. A couple have been torn down for parking. Last thing, here on Main Street at the end, you got Happy Dragon Restaurant, which is a Chinese restaurant. Um, it is the go-to Chinese restaurant in the area. Again, a staple in the community, been around here forever. But let's walk over to the mill and I'll take you inside the mill. I'll show you a few things and then we'll continue on down Main Street. All right, guys, I'm standing in front of uh, building 13, which is the Main Street side of the Pepper Mill campus. 
This is building 13. This is the largest building of those of that 1.1 million building complex that uh, the developer I was talking to you about bought. Um, and this is kind of the main street front side of it. Um, we're gonna go into these double doors right over here. And we're gonna walk into a big lobby that has history on how these mills were developed. Um, there's also a cool little foodery place here called the Garden Bar right here actually just opened friends of mine opened it really doing a great job getting a lot of uh getting a lot of activity and a lot of things but here we are and uh the history of the mills and if you can see behind me they got a wheel here an old drive piston and it talks about the water power i don't know if you can see that uh yep yeah, water power um the steam engine everything that it came to be they have the history of the Sockle River and how it was developed coming up and down through here. Uh, and it talks about in each point how these mills were developed and why they were developed. So even if you guys just come here to visit and you wanna know the history of this area, come to this uh, display and it'll talk a lot about the history of it. We also have Think Tank co-working space. I actually have an office in there and so as these places started becoming more developed and more things happening, co-working spaces started popping up and this is the most prestigious one. Um, you got a shop over here called Sea and Love uh, or Sea Love. He's got some really cool shop items and stuff like that uh, through here. And um, I was talking to you about um, Sugar. Well, Sugar's parent, the manufacturing company is Angel Rocks. And they're right here, and they're the ones that make all that cool women clothing and stuff like that. Roxy and Julian, who've done a great job. So I'm walking down one of the hallways, and I'm going to take you out to the back of the mills and show you the fall. So as I said, guys, we're outside in the between the buildings. This is Mill 20, Building 20, which is the front of Main Street, which is where I showed you all the shops. And this is Mill 15, which is all restaurant, uh, all apartments, and there's some. Uh, to some uh, shops down below. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk down these stairs here. We're gonna walk to where it all began, the Sockle River and the falls, and what really built this entire mill complex, these entire 38 acres. Now the mill, I mean the water, the river is ripping right now. Uh, we've had a lot of rain, and actually the river flooded for quite a bit. Flooded out some parks, we've got a lot of rain. Anyways, um, the falls are ripping pretty fast right now. Interesting note about these falls, the reason why this mill complex was built on such a small footprint. Usually if you go, you know, other mills across the country, they run long way down the rivers because the rivers are straight. Well, this, like I said, the, the river made an estuary, so they built it in this small compact footed of, um, of, the, of the 38 acres. And it's all because of this Sockle River. And what we're walking to again is the falls and the falls make like a 43 foot drop from the top to the bottom. So not only does it make an S turn which creates all kinds of power, but then it makes a, uh, it drops, which is just another craziness. Um, so um, you probably can hear it in the background. I'm going to turn around here in a second and you're going to see them ripping down through here. I would not encourage you to be whitewater rafting down these at this time, but here we are. These are the Sockle Falls, drops 43 feet, and all this stuff came into these, um, you probably can't see it in this video, but you have these little, these little uh, areas where they used to come in underneath the mills into these tunnels, and they would power the mills. So, as you can see, I'm kind of in the heart of behind the mill district, and all these mills um, that were built, that built kind of this region, the bit of the Sockle area. So we're going to take a walk down through the back here and I'm going to take you over to the river walk and uh, we're going to cross over the river. We're going to come up on the Sockle side real quick and I'm just going to show you the Biddeford side of the mills from the Sockle side. We'll come up the rest of Main Street and then we'll be done with Main Street and we'll head over and look at some, uh, look at some houses and some price points. Alright guys, I'm on the front of the North Dam Mill which is the easternmost part of the mill district or uh, you know the Biddeford Mills if you will. This is about as far down as you can get and really 
I don't know if you can see that. I can't my camera right, but there's a stack. So in this building right here, you just have these big, massive uh, coal plants. And uh, after the water went away and they got to generating electricity using coal as the fuel source, uh, they had these big, massive uh, boilers in here. They'd shovel coal in, boil the water. The water would turn a tur uh, boil the water. The steam would turn a turbine, and you'd have some uh, you'd have some electricity. We're well, walking right now. We're going to start walking down this path right here, and this is what the start is of the river walk uh, that the city is in the process of building. Uh, it's been an ongoing project uh, as developers started buying more and more mills. Uh, they've expanded the, the river walk and uh, it's going to continue all around this city down here, but it kind of ends down here on the Saco side and then it'll eventually continue all along the Saco River out back and that's for a few years to come. But that's just what's kind of going on in the growth of down here in the, in the Biddeford area, in the Biddeford Saco and the Mill District. All right, we're going to about ready to walk over a bridge right here. The Saco uh, connecting uh, Biddeford to Saco. We're gonna walk right over the river where I just showed you where those Saco Falls were. We're gonna stand right in the river. And I'm gonna tell you, back in the day, before this was developed, some of the best striper fishing was here. And you can actually see, they're not allowed to come up as far anymore, but there's some people down here. Where am I? There's some people down here trying to pull some striper fish out of there. I think the water's still ripping kind of hard for them, but the striper fish should definitely come up. Anyways, we are standing in the middle of the river walk, in the middle of a bridge that connects Saco to Biddeford. So Saco side, and where I just came through was Biddeford side. Maybe I'll show you in a map so you get an idea. But this is the river walk. Um, I remember when they were putting in this bridge back about eight years ago. Pretty cool sight to see. This used to be a utility bridge which carried gas and electric and they got rid of it. And, Put in a walking bridge but uh, this is the river walk it actually it actually goes all along and you can see we are right over there uh, right there by the, um, the gazebo and then the, and then the stanchion there and all, and all that that park over there we were over there earlier looking at the soccer falls so um, again as we continue down the river walk we're actually on the soccer side I'm going to have another, I'm going to show you another video about Saco and the benefits that there is to living in Saco right now. We're in Biddeford. All right, I'm going to take you up the rest of Main Street. I'm going to walk back to where I just came from. I'm going to take you up the, uh, the easternmost side of uh, Main Street, which is really called the lower end of Main Street. And then we'll hop in my car and we'll go look at some houses. All right, let's do that. All right, guys, we're on the lower end of Main Street where the Mill District begins. Um, kind of getting you dizzy here, I know. but. Here's the bridge coming from Saco into Biddeford. Here's the uh, beginning of the Mill District. And you'll notice one thing that Biddeford did was pretty cool, is coming into, uh, coming into Biddeford, you have Mechanics Park. So this is a nice, good green area space, good park. People hang out in it all the time. It's starting to get warmer here in the, in the state. We're in the beginning of May, so you're gonna see more and more activity. Uh, in August, there's a huge river uh, music festival called River Jam here, sponsored by the Heart of Biddeford, and you have cool musicians and stuff that perform there. So anyways, we're walking up, um, there's always some banging or some construction going on. We're walking up Main Street. Um, I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna tilt my camera up here, but these mill buildings go pretty tall. And it's interesting that the person I told you came here and developed the first mill complex Back in 2004, I know him actually personally. He's a great guy. He went through a lot and uh, really, really uh, helped this town grow and succeed and uh, has become what it's become. But as you look up ahead, you're going to see this tall mill buildings up here. Uh, it used to be for storage for, uh, for uh, their, their products. <laughs> he called that the wall of Biddeford because you got to imagine when you're going to develop a mill complex and you, you got to remember he bought part of this during the worst depression like in 2007 when everything was going crazy um, you know he calls it the wall of Biddeford because it was a pretty depressed area he had a lot of uh, drug use and uh, 
unfortunately, you know, high crime, but that's all gone now. It's really cleaned up amazingly. You got a cool little uh, coffee shop over here called Tide and Time. Um, or is it Time and Tide? It is Time and Tide. I always get that backwards. I should know that because Brianna and her husband own it. And uh, Brianna's getting mad at me when she watches this video. But uh, Brianna and I serve on the Heart of Biddeford board together. So um, I'm probably going to hear about that one. Uh, you got a cool little, uh, another wood grain barber. Uh, my stepson loves to go there and get his uh, hair cut. Um, a, lot of, a lot of these little cool shops as we walk up the uh, lower end of Main Street. And again, I'm walking against the mill. I switch, I switch hands because here we are. You got Elder and you got, and you got Rabbit, Jack Rabbit, Jack Rabbit uh, Cafe. Now it doesn't look like much from the outside. But Elder is a world-renowned re world chef, and the food in there, in this mill, is incredible. You wouldn't see it from the outside. It's kind of like you need to know about it from a local perspective, but they're getting more and more and more press, uh, more write-ups about the food seen here in Biddeford. A lot of it's been about Portland, but Biddeford is really starting to grow and go crazy. You got a, you got a wine, wine place right here, Lorne. Uh, you got Disney Birds, which is another eatery place. And of course, you got a ton of 18 wheelers right now. For some reason, coming down Main Street and you never see that. So, figures when I'm recording, we're going to have big trucks coming through. It's always the way, you know. It's If it's not raining, which it rained a lot this year in April, you got construction going on because they got to get it all done. Uh, anyways, we're up on uh, coming up to the beginning of where that building uh, 13 starts. Peppermill campus and um, we're gonna walk back to my car and I'm gonna jump in and we're gonna go show you some price price points of some homes all right here we are back to the uh, beginning we're building 13 and I walked right in through those glass doors right there so let's get to my car and uh, we'll go show you some property all right All right guys, so what I thought I'd do first before I show you some existing houses is I was gonna take you into a couple of neighborhoods, a couple of developments that are being built right now. The thing about Southern Maine is, uh, again, it's not a secret anymore. There's a lot of people that are looking to move here, primarily because it's a very safe state, quality of life, the weather, believe it or not, winters aren't as bad as what they used to be. You might actually be able to hear a, uh, a rooster crackling in the background, but we're in a neighborhood that's being developed. Uh, there's not much to see here, but I'm gonna sh post a couple of houses that's gonna be built in here. They're looking at about three bedroom, uh, three bath houses, roughly 447 square feet, kind of the typical house. There's a couple of them going on right now. This is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lot uh, area. Now here's the cool thing about this area right here. It is literally a half a mile from, maybe a quarter of a mile from Fortune's Rocks from the Atlantic Ocean. If you head that way, south a little bit, you're gonna be in Kennebunk Port in about seven miles. And you're about uh, six or seven miles from the downtown where we just came from. This is a very desirable area. And what we're seeing is because the housing market in, in Southern Maine is light. When I mean light, there's not a ton of houses for sale, right? I think in Biddeford alone, there's maybe 19 half of them are under contract existing you're seeing more and more construction uh, you're seeing more and more uh, developments going on and this is this is an example of one that what we do is we help you know new clients or people from out of state who are looking to build or move into a neighborhood like this we take them from the beginning to the end from the first steps of design all the way until uh, all the way until they get their keys and move into construction but this is a place it's off the pool road um, it's all new construction. I'll show you on a map exactly where it is. Again, K 
Kennebunkport, one of the most happening spots in southern Maine. Uh, you get all kinds of foods and shops and little stuff down there. And then you got back into town where I came from. Uh, you have the, uh, the downtown and everything that's happening there. You're about a quarter of a mile from the beach, Fortune's Rocks, uh, uh, Hills Beach, the Atlantic Ocean. Really, really great, really great place to live. Um, and you can see around me a little bit, you can see a lot of some of the construction that's going on um, and some of the new houses that are being built. Maybe you can't see it that cool because we're in the woods, but there's uh, one that's kind of, you know, halfway done. Uh, again, about 2,000 square foot houses. Some of them are going to be a little bit bigger. Some of them are going to be a little bit smaller. Colonial ranches, maybe some contemporaries. There's kind of a contemporary, a different design going on down here. But this must be a specific build because it says sale pending on this lot. Uh, looks like it's two different complexes or two different buildings. Uh, yeah, two different buildings. Looks like a garage and then a a smaller house uh, shape, diff, diff, definitely uh, different contemporary, but you see it over here. Um, so not a lot to look at, I get it guys, and just give me an idea of what's kind of going on in Southern Maine, a lot of construction, a lot of developments being built, and especially when you head east of the downtown, you know, head towards the ocean, there's a lot of stuff going down here. And again, the price per square foot isn't cheap, right? 450, 490, you know, some things you'll see in the 400s, brand new construction, brand new developments, but very desirable area to live. Lots of things going on around here. And um, yeah, Biddeford is on the move. Maine is on the move. Again, um, they don't tell you the whole statistics, right, about people moving to these states. They always say Florida and Texas. Uh, which I agree, Florida and Texas have a lot of people moving in, but when you look at the inbound and outbound traffic, in other words, how many people come in to how many people go out, Maine was tied with Florida for number two, North Carolina was number one. They all talk about all the people coming in and how, you know, Texas has, I don't know, millions or hundreds of thousands, and that's true, but how many people are leaving? So that's a real, to me, the real statistic. The influx of people coming and people going, yeah, we'll never compare with a Texas or a Florida. We're not that big of a state and we're up in the northeast corner. But again, Maine is not a secret anymore. Uh, there's a lot of people that are looking to come up here to the northeast. It's safe. Again, quality of life. I'm kind of rambling now. Quality of life, safe. Uh, the food scene is incredible. The stuff to do here all season, all year long doesn't matter the season right you just have to adjust for the season whether you want to go snowmobiling in the in the winter time or whether you want to go fishing or swimming in the summertime you have the best of both worlds best part for me in, in maine i love the fall i love the i love the leaves i love pumpkins i love pumpkin beer i love obviously thanksgiving i love all that time that's my favorite part of the year uh, fall and then obviously fall summer winter spring in that order Anyways, we're gonna to drive to another subdivision. I'm not sure I can get in there right now uh, because they're paving. And if I can't, then I'll take you to a house that's for sale, uh, kind of back where we were at back in, back in town. Uh, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, I'm gonna do a little video while I'm driving too, so maybe that'll give me a good idea of the area. So guys, we're actually traveling down the pool road, heading back into town into Biddeford, uh, in case you want to know where we're at. And again, I'll put this out on a map so you can see it as I'm traveling, just so you know exactly where we are. You know what I'm gonna do since we're out here? I'm gonna take you down to Biddeford Pool. Again, about a half mile from the beach. So let's uh, let me show you what Biddeford Pool looks like. The ocean and the scenery and everything that's going on down here in terms of uh, the people that kind of people that live down here in the houses. Again, we're gonna be right on the Atlantic Ocean here in a second. 
I might actually have to put my camera out uh, my other window to give you an idea because the ocean is going to be on my passenger side. So guys, I just drove about, um, I don't know, a minute and we're already down to the beach from that subdivision I was just showing you. Here's a view. Just trying to give you a good idea of some of the areas in Biddeford and Southern Maine and the beaches. Now you do have to have a parking pass during the season to uh, come down here because as you can imagine there's a lot of people that come down here and want to hang out at the beaches from here and not from here. So. Bitterford's gotten a little wise and said, hey, how do we monopolize, make some money on that? So they now charge you a parking pass uh, during the season, which I believe is, I think there's a sign up here from, uh, I want to say June, right through Labor Day, but maybe there's a sign up here to tell us. June 15th through Labor Day is the parking pass requirements. And here's some of the parking that we're going by. Actually, let's get out and I'll take you up on the rocks and show you the beach while we're here. All right, guys, we're looking at Fortune's Rocks and the beaches of Biddeford. Um, we just came from that subdivision that I was showing you that's being developed, which is about a half mile away. Tide's about half tide. Uh, in another two months, this will be a pretty loaded beach with all kinds of stuff going on down here. But this is one of the inlets of uh, the nice sandy beaches that we have in Maine. And uh, I'll show you on a map exactly where we're at. And uh, maybe they'll post this on this video with me. Uh, but man, you can smell the salt water. It smells so good. Look, I know a lot of people think we're gonna be crazy, but there's a woman out there She's about uh, up to her waist right now. I think that's a woman. It might be a man up to the waist doing some, uh, doing some um, cold water immersion training, which is really good for you. The water temperature right now is probably, I'm gonna guess mid 50s. So it's not warm, uh, but cold water is actually really good for you. It's, there's so many benefits to the cold water views, uh, the cold water immersion training. Happened to have to do it a lot when I was in the Navy. so. Uh, back in the day, so I know the benefits. Still shocked to get into the system when you first get in, but it is what it is. Anyways, Bitterford Pool, we'll start at Bitterford Pool. We're down here in the Fortune's Rocks area. Um, we're going out to Bitterford Pool and we'll come out. I'm gonna try to get all the way to that point up there and then we'll come back. All right, guys, still recording here. So, see if I can keep my arm steady. As you can see, a lot of these houses on the Atlantic Ocean side of this road, of course, very well manicured lawns. Um, some of it can't be disturbed because we have what are called pipers, they're little birds uh, that come in about this time of the year and you're not allowed to uh, do anything uh, with the dunes or uh, some of the yards that are close to the beach until the pipers go away. You're definitely not allowed to have dogs on the beach without a leash at this time of the year because of the Piper birds. Um, but as you can see, a lot of these houses are a lot older. Biddeford Pool has been developed quite a bit uh, in the in the later or in the earlier days. A lot of older people. When I say older, 
retirees or you know people that are you know in their 50s 60s obviously older than that um, let me shoot over to this side and you can see uh see if i can show you uh, that's the pool so it's called Biddeford pool because it's a giant pool when the tide comes in the water is you know it looks like a giant just a giant pool of water it's, the tide's low right now so you're not going to see as much of it but um i've taken my boat in the beginning of the pool it's pretty cool you can't go very far in but you can check out Biddeford pool and all it has great fishing all around here um, you catch everything from striper bass to flounder to obviously mackerel. Um, what else have I caught? I've caught uh, some Acadia redfish. Uh, there's definitely tuna, probably a little bit further out, but you can get some tuna. And then when the blue fins come in, uh, bluefish, the blues come in later on in the year, great blues fishing. Which is, uh, which is a form of tuna, form of, uh, see, uh, yeah, I want to say tuna, I guess. I don't eat it, but uh, it's really good. I'm just not a big, I'm not a big fish fan. I mean, I like fish, I like scallops and stuff like that, but um, crab, I love crab. Anyways, we're, we're coming around Biddeford Pool, like I showed you the picture back there, the video, trying to get to that point. I'm gonna drive right out to that point where we were just looking at. And I'll show you uh, what it looks like when you get out there, looking back at where the last, where I stopped and showed you the video of the, uh, of the uh, beach. So kind of just showing you on my map where we're at. We're right here on this little island and we're gonna uh, head out to the corner of the point where I was just showing you. <laughs> this is what it looks like on my map. Curious of where we're at. All right, we're going to take this right, right here, get down closer to the ocean, and we'll head down uh, 7th Street. My buddy back there mowing some lawn. Woodchuck. Calls his company Woodchuck. He does all kinds of stuff out here. All his clients are out here. All right. Another house going in right there. You got to put them pretty close together on these, in these lots because there's not a lot of land. You can imagine if you oh, do not enter, can't go that way. You should be able to go that way. I have to go around the other way. All right, let's switch over to here. And now I'll take you around that corner. Just a beautiful view, guys. Beautiful view. How many, how many times I do this, this drive, it's this view. So um, we were, we were back there. We were back there shooting this way. And here we are now at the point shooting uh, back up to that water. I know I'm a little, uh, a little jaded, but there is nothing like Maine 
from about this time, you know, May. So I'll say, I mean, I like all, all seasons, but from May to Labor Day, this place is just amazing. And then it gets a little colder. I mean, if you're not from here, you might find it to be a little chilly, but the foliage and uh, leaves changing and all that is just, is just incredible to see the views and um, the uh, scenery. There's somebody out there uh, you're gonna miss because the bushels that you're trying to get some, uh, some the local wildlife off the rocks. My car's kind of low, so uh, we're seeing nothing but shrubbery right now. Sorry about that. Let's see if we can get past the shrubbery. Look out over. Yeah, you got some people out there. Uh, here's some here's some good views. So you'll have some after we get past these bushes. Get some people out there sitting, having lunch, doing a little painting. This is all Biddeford, Maine, guys. This is the coast of Biddeford, Maine. You have the beaches back here. You have these beautiful uh, rocky beaches and cliffs. A lot of people come out here just to look at the wildlife and, uh, you know, breathe in the fresh air and take in the scenes and paint and take pictures. And it's different, you know, they talk about the quality of life in Maine. This is an example of it. Uh, a lot of Zen, if you will, if you need any Zen masters out there, you know, it's a lot of Zen out there. All right, I'm gonna stop the video and we'll uh, take the other side. So I'm gonna pull over and walk into this little park, but I just wanna show you where we are on my map, on my GPS, and my car, and then uh, I'm gonna get out and show you the, show you the real life. So here we are guys, uh, Vines Landing, a little, little uh, park here at the end of Biddeford Pool. And what you have out here is you have Wood Island, you have Monument Island, great, great fishing. I've been all up and down here with my boat, but um, so that's the Atlantic Ocean, Old Orchard Beach, Saco, the other side of Biddeford. The Saco River is out here. Saco River's out here, so you come up this way, come around, hang out around these islands, come right into the Biddeford Pool. And again, the tide's low. So this sends you right into the Biddeford Pool, where we just drove through, pool area. Looks like somebody's doing some controlled burning over there. I mean, these houses out here, million, two million, three million dollar houses, no matter how you get to it. Some of these houses you need to get to with a boat. Uh, there's a few out there on the point that you, I believe you have to get a boat to. Um, but this is Biddeford Pool. This is the Biddeford area on the coast. And uh, again, you're not going to find you know find this in your everyday walkabout in uh, the states. Very desirable, very very awesome place to visit and come eat. And if you live down here, or if you live you know back to that neighborhood that I was showing you about, you're only. 10 minutes from here, so. All good. You wanna get some lobster while well, there's the local grocery store and you can actually get your lobster there. Uh, again, we're in Maine. And then up here you get the post office. Again, we're in Biddeford Pool, which is a subset of Biddeford, but uh, there's the local post office. So. Remaining? Yeah, here we are. Can't. All right, we're gonna head out of Biddeford Pool now and I'll take you to another subdivision. Uh, I'm not sure I can get in when I broke by it early today. It looks like they were paving. So I don't wanna take my car in there with hot tar. And it's probably, uh, it's probably all kinds, you know, I'm probably gonna get slammed for this one, but how many times you go by a job site and you see like three guys working and five guys standing around? I guess that's what they call supervisors, right? Somebody's gotta watch, two people gotta watch one person work, apparently is the uh, rule of thumb. 
there's some property out here for sale but typically typically you don't have uh, Okay guys, here's another subdivision that's going in. Again, we're about a half mile from the beach, maybe a mile in the other direction. Um, but uh, a lot of houses that are going in here are kind of contemporary. There are some lots still available for building, but you can see they're building back there in the back corner already. Um, and all this area. I'll show you uh, some pictures of some of the houses, but again, a lot of construction, a lot of, a lot of uh, development, in, especially in Eastern Bitterford, closer to the ocean. Um, just this you know such an influx of people wanting to move here um, especially from some of the states that are kind of the crazy stuff's going on i'm going to say uh, without getting political uh, you don't have any of that stuff here or very little it's very uh everybody respects everybody opinions good everybody's pretty nice it's a pretty friendly area how it happens that we only have a population of 1.5 million so that were 1.4 million so that helps too but Again, another example of a subdivision that's going, on, going in in Biddeford. Uh, there's more and more of these popping up. So again, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. Let us know what you think. Comment below and we'll go from there.